Hey everyone, I wanted to take some time to go over some questions that I get pretty consistently about going to law school and having a big law career. So let's go ahead and do that. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Jack Duffley and I'm a commercial real estate attorney here in Chicago at a large firm. Now I am still pretty new to the game since I only got my license back in May of 2021, but I've been working full time as an attorney since. I'm filming from the Willis Tower in Chicago, which I've wanted to do for some time. Got my questions right here, so let's get into it. The first question that's also the most common that I get pretty much all the time is, how's work? And I wouldn't be an attorney if I didn't answer this question with, it depends. And that's because there are a lot of ebbs and flows with the workflow, especially in a transactional practice. I am a real estate attorney, so depending on what's going on in a given week or month, that's gonna wildly change how my work experience is going as well. Some transactions are really gonna take all of your waking hours for days or even weeks at a time, depending on how intense they are and what else you're working on at the same time. It's kind of hard to control that, especially as a newer associate where you're just trying to get whatever work you can get and get as much experience as possible. But there definitely is an expectation in big law that in general, you're gonna be working pretty dense weeks. Some weeks are much more dense than others and some weeks are pretty light. I've definitely put in a number of 12 to 14 hour workdays at this point, but not too many in the grand scheme of things, especially compared to what some people might say big law is like, despite never having done it themselves. I personally do my best to spread out my schedule in such a way where I try to bill six hours a day, seven days a week. That's not always feasible. That's my general target. I much prefer to spread out the work as much as possible over multiple days, as opposed to trying to do it all in one day and then I get really exhausted by the end of it because this can be pretty intense work where you really have to focus because after all, you're the attorney and the mistakes are gonna fall on you. You're the one who's supposed to catch all of those mistakes. So that can be pretty exhausting. And I wanna make sure that I'm well rested when I'm going through more intense work. Of course, it doesn't always work out that way, but much of the time it does. No matter what, I'm still trying to get the work done as quickly and effectively as possible because that's what you're paid for. Which leads me into the next question that I get pretty much all the time. And that is, how is your work-life balance? Big Law definitely has the reputation that you have no opportunity to do anything outside of your job. And that's definitely not the case. Now from week to week, sometimes that can happen if you have a really intense transaction. It's probably all you're gonna be focusing on. What Big Law really does is it forces you to remain flexible to hop on one of those transactions at pretty much any time. So that's kind of where a lot of the stress comes from. It's not so much that you're actually working from 7 a.m. to midnight every night. That's really not gonna happen most of the time, but you kind of have to be available to do that at any given point because you never know what transaction's gonna come up and what demands a client's gonna have. But again, generally that's pretty rare and that's not gonna be happening every single day for weeks at a time. That's usually kind of a one-off thing, but you have to be ready for it. But otherwise, I definitely still have time to pursue other interests. For example, I do this YouTube channel. I put a good amount of time towards that, whether it be researching that, researching video ideas and topics and actually filming the thing. So that definitely is a significant amount of time and I still have time for it. You definitely have to have a pretty solid routine to make it work though. Next question, which is on a similar note, what are your hours like? Like I said, it can vary, but at least for myself in a transactional practice, most of the meat of the day is between your typical business hours, eight to five or something like that. That's where pretty much most of the work is gonna get done. And that's the same time you're supposed to be available for pretty much anything. A lot of people do work evenings, at least some of the time, myself included. And that also goes for weekends as well. It's not as though you're always gonna have the ability to take a super relaxing weekend. That's pretty hard to do because again, it really depends on what clients are needing at any given time. People are still able to take time off. It can be difficult at times, but it is doable. And I guess this would be a good time to talk about billable hours since that is a hot topic for associates like myself. We have to hit a specific billable hours requirement in order to one, keep our jobs, but also to get promoted to the next level and eventually make our way towards partner. For just about any big law firm, it's gonna be something like 1,800 to 2,000 billable hours in a year that an associate has to hit in order to meet their requirements. And there are often guaranteed bonuses for going above that. And you might be saying, hey, 2,000 hours a week, that's like 40 hours a week for a year. That's not really all that unreasonable. Well, remember, this is billable time. That's different from actual work time. You can't bill every hour that you're working. If you're sifting through emails, if you're trying to organize yourself, that's not something that you can bill to a client. Billable work is specific work towards a client matter. And that is not what you're always gonna be doing, unfortunately. And at least in my own experience, for every eight hours or so that I work, I'm probably billing somewhere between six to seven hours. So it's not as though it's 100% of my time is being billed. And that's not a hard and fast rule. It definitely depends on the day, but I think that's probably a good benchmark. So most weeks I'm probably working at least 40 hours for probably closer to 50 or 60. Next question, how much do you make? 
And I'm not sure if it's kosher for me to say exactly what I'm making, but I will say that you can easily look up what the salaries are for a lot of the big firms out there. They pretty much publicize these things to try and one up each other. Every year they kind of inch up a little bit to see who is the highest paid one, who's paying the most money to their associates. It's this weird sort of game. But generally speaking, first year associates at a big law firm are probably going to be making somewhere around $200,000 per year. It's definitely a lot of money and for many people it is life-changing money. Associates typically follow a pretty rigid fixed scale in getting pay raises so every year they work they typically get some sort of raise or every year they rank up to the next level of associate that's typically how it works in big law here's a question i've gotten a number of times do you wear a suit to work to answer the question no the reason i'm wearing a suit today is because i have dinner and a show for tonight with my wife so i'm looking forward to that we decided to get fancy so that's why i'm wearing a suit today now if i was in litigation and had to go to court all the time it might be a different story i might have to wear a suit in that case more often than not but in my case being a transactional guy hardly seeing clients face to face it's a lot of emails and going back and forth and just checking over documents, making sure things are in line that I typically don't have to dress up for and most of the time working from home anyways. Maribel asks, do you regret going to law school? What's life like after school? Now, to answer the first question, I definitely don't regret going to law school. I've gotten some great opportunities out of it, including my current job. I've met some great people at it and I didn't have to go into debt to go to law school because I got a full ride, which I've documented on this channel and how I did that and how you potentially could do that yourself if you're interested as well. But generally speaking, it was a positive experience, except for that last year where it went virtual because of the pandemic. That wasn't nearly as beneficial, but otherwise I got a lot of great things out of law school and I enjoyed it. As for life after school, at least for me, it's definitely nice actually being paid to do legal work as opposed to going to school and not being paid. And it's very nice to have the bar exam behind me because that was pretty stressful. Jackson asks, where did you go to law school? Was the full ride unconditional? Lastly, this assumes you didn't get a full ride to a top 14. Did you have a plan for what you would do if you didn't place high enough in your class rankings to get a job? in big law? This is a really good question. I went to law school at Chicago Kent College of Law here in downtown Chicago, so actually just next door pretty much to the building I'm in now. And the full ride was conditional only on me participating in the honors program at the school and also maintaining good standing, so basically not failing classes. The honors program specifically required me to do some specific classes, mainly these research projects that we did as a group, and that was generally pretty good, but it's not as though it was like a huge extra requirement. It was more replacing an existing class. There are a lot of opportunities, especially at that mid-tier law school level, to get full rides, so definitely look into it if you're interested in going to law school. As for the second part of the question, did I have a plan if I didn't get into big law? I mean, not really. I was definitely taking things as I was going along. I did take a risk because I quit a property management job that I was working during my first year. I went to school at night in my first year, and I did just well enough in my first year that I wanted to take a shot at trying to get a big law job. So I quit that property management job, worked an internship at a commercial real estate firm in Chicago, and then I applied to big law spots and I ended up landing one. How much of that was luck? I'm not too sure, but I did put myself in a decent position and it ended up working out. But in any event, if I didn't get the big law spot, I would still be in an okay position because I had a full ride to law school. I didn't have that same financial risk that a lot of people have when they take out massive amounts of debt to go to school. I was also house hacking at the time where you rent out a bedroom to offset some of your living costs, so my housing costs were quite low as well. I was just doing everything I could to try and mitigate the risk of going to law school. I think that's a good place to wrap it up. Thank you for your questions. If you guys have more questions about having a legal career going to law school, well, definitely let me know in the comments below and I'll try to answer them in a future video. But otherwise, thanks for stopping by. Be sure to subscribe and until next time, take care.